Today we're making an outdoor lounge chair out of thermally modified ash. The ash comes in one inch by five and a half inch deck boards. I cut out the pieces on my XCAR Pro by Inventables and I'll make the files for this project free. Just click the link in the description. I cut the tabs with my jigsaw and don't worry, I'm actually gonna use this scrap for the slats for the chair. A quick pass or two with my palm router removes the tabs and now I'm ready to glue up the pieces. This waterproof Type Bond 3 should be strong enough for outdoor use, but I added in a couple deck screws just to be safe. The side profile pieces are two layers of ash thick, and they have a nice little offset so that I can put the cross boards flush to the profile. I find that trying to glue all the pieces for a profile together at once is a little bit too tricky. You just have a lot of adjustments to make. So I recommend gluing them up a few pieces at the time and then connecting those larger pieces. I used a roundover bit to ease the edges on the profiles, and now I'm ready to start fabricating the slats. I set up a stop block on my miter saw to start cutting these cross pieces. I used the end cuts off of long boards and the CNC outlines as well. I then went over to my saw stop table saw and ripped the angled pieces into rectangles. Ash is a pretty hard wood, so rounding over the edges is nice just to keep them from being too sharp. I'm using the Craig 720 Pro Pocket Hole Jig. I really like this unit. It's fast and easy, and it actually allows my designs to be a lot thinner and more streamlined because with pocket holes, I can keep things more flush and less layered. I made sure to use outdoor rated deck screws since this chair is going to an Airbnb property in the mountains that sees a lot of snow. I started installing the slats at the corners, and the trickiest part was getting the first few in, which stabilizes the whole piece, and then I can just infill with nice consistent spacing. This thermally modified ash is really nice looking. It has like the color of walnut, but is rated for outdoor use, and I'll go into it a little bit more later in the video. The ash is fine on its own and doesn't need a sealer, but the client wants to preserve the color as long as possible, so I did add a UV protector. Now before I share my thoughts on thermally modified ash, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Extra Space Storage. I have a lot of furniture to make these days for both my new house and the hotel that I'm developing. And I need a storage facility where I can safely store the stuff during the construction process. Extra Space Storage is the most professional, cleanest, and most modern storage facility that I have used, and I highly recommend them. I signed up and was able to do all of the administrative work online super fast, and the facilities are super clean, well-maintained, and even came with a lock. And not a lock that could easily be cut off with bolt cutters or an angle grinder. It's actually integrated into the door for this unit. But what I appreciated the most was just how well the website works. You can actually see a map to pick your unit and make sure that you have direct vehicular access to it. And they have a really clear breakdown of what's available, the different sizes, with nice little diagrams that suggest how much stuff you can fit in each unit. So shout out to Extra Space Storage for sponsoring this video and check the link in the description. So this thermally modified ash is really interesting. I like doing a lot of DIY outdoor woodworking projects, but your options when it comes to wood that performs well and lasts a long time outside is pretty limited. Way back in the day, you know, there was always pressure treated, but there's so many chemicals in that that I, I really don't like using it too much. Obviously now there's a lot of composite options, but those are really difficult when it comes to glue up, although they're pretty great in terms of how they weather for decking. I use a lot of cedar, which is fantastic, but has sort of different regional availability and is more of a softwood. On the hardwood side, traditionally I've used a lot of tropical hardwoods like Ipe, Masarinduba, or even tiger wood. They're probably the most similar to this uh, thermally treated ash. The big difference would be weight. Both are hardwoods, but the oil in those tropical hardwood makes it a lot heavier and a lot denser. So it's a much more difficult wood to sand and work with in general. This ash is just a joy to work with. It's actually probably most similar to like the bamboo plywood that I've worked with because it's so, it's so well dried and so dimensionally stable. Now, the other thing that I think is really interesting is the color. And so here is, Raw, regular ash is a hardwood. Kiln dried, it's great for axe handles, all that kind of stuff. Really nice blonde color. But when it goes through the thermal modification process, it 
comes out almost like the color of walnut. Now, I have two different boards right here. This one that's lighter in color has been out in the sun for about six months. I let it sit out there just because I was curious on how the color would change over time. And so as you can see, it's quite a bit lighter, but it won't get as light as, as the sort of natural ash does without any sort of thermal treatment. Now this thermally modified ash came from a company called Arbor Wood, and they sell this as decking. They do sell some thicker pieces that you can use for furniture projects, and they also use it or recommend it for siding for houses. They're not a sponsor, but I reached out to them just because I thought the product was really interesting, and they're a U.S.-based company, which is always a nice thing. I was curious though to learn more about this thermally modified process and they do it in three phases in a kiln. It's chemical free and it uses only heat and steam. Now, initially they do a gradual temperature increase that reduces the equilibrium moisture content of the wood. So basically like a typical sort of kiln for hardwood, they heat it up and that makes the moisture airborne and then they can vent out that, that steam. The second phase is where it gets really interesting though and they really ramp up the temperature and the cellular composition of the wood is altered in this high heat oxygen deprived environment which converts the natural acids and sugars so as to no longer be a food source for mold rot or fungal decay. This also renders the wood hydrophobic meaning it loses much of the natural tendency to absorb water going forward. As a natural byproduct of the process, the wood takes on a darker color, which gives it more of a look like an exotic species. Now in the second phase, the wood is too dry to be really useful for sort of woodworking. So in the third and final phase, they introduce a little bit of steam to cool the wood down and then to bring that moisture content right to where you want it for ideal woodworking, which is like four to six percent. The boards are unbelievably straight, like, ridiculously straight, no curvature, no warpage in any direction for any of the ones that I got, and I got quite a few of them. It smells like a little bit like a campfire. Like you can actually smell just a little bit of smokiness, and that's probably coming from when they did that sort of second phase with the high heat. It looks fantastic, and even though it doesn't need a finish for exterior use, it does absorb oils really well. So. I think I'm going to use this a lot for some of the outdoor furniture projects for the hotel I'm working on. Um, tropical hardwood is another option. And it's, it, I really like that, that species or those species as well. But I just think this is, has a, just that medium brown color option. And I mean, walnut is woodworkers' favorite kind of colored grain for it just looks so good and it's that medium brown and this gives us an outdoor walnut basically that will last a really long time and isn't heavily chemically treated so thanks to arbor wood for sending over these samples i'll put a link to their website in the description below so you can learn more about it and now let's talk a little bit about the design file so this is the the third version of the lounge chair that i've done um, really, this one's actually going to an Airbnb property that a friend of mine runs uh, up in the mountains that gets a lot of snow. The files for this on Easel are available now for free, so just click the link in the description. This is a slightly larger version than the previous ones, and it has a much taller back. The first ones I found were really good for someone about sort of 5'8 to 5'9, and this one is pretty good for heights up to about 6'1 to 6'3. I also changed the files so the pieces could all be cut from a five and a half inch wide deck board. So if you want to make an outdoor chair like this, five and a half inch wide deck boards are a pretty common size, one inch thick. Um, and all the pieces are designed so they'll fit within those board types. So that's, that's a lot different than the layout of pieces that I use for making uh, these chairs out of plywood. So I thought that might come in handy. Now, one thing I'd be really curious to see, and I highly encourage anyone out there that has a CNC that uses the easel, is to try this chair out of a composite decking material. You'd probably have to use screws since those materials don't really glue that well together without using some really hardcore epoxy. But I mean, that would wear extraordinarily well. And you know, there's some pretty low cost uh, uh, composite deck board companies out there. So give it a shot. 
if you're so inclined. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks to Extra Space for sponsoring this video and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks, bye.